about uh, bookcase operation, a little bit about the history, how it got started. What is it? All right, the bookcase operation was something I was doing with some people in the community, you know, with gyms and with Teen Sets for Greatness. What we want to do is we want to use pallets that, that will, will be disposed, and we will take these disposed pallets, reuse them, clean them up, you know, paint over them. Like, you see, we arrange the bowl so that we can produce something more uh, useful. We, we just recycling and doing something that can give kids, we want to give kids skills involving carpentry, involving drafting, involving sustainability, and t teach them skills that will be useful li later in their life. We had uh, started the program, and then along came Derek, Mr. Wynn, and he uh, had this brilliant idea of uh, recycling pallets, and uh, he mentioned how he wanted to help uh, people with dementia and um, Alzheimer's and um, that we thought that was a great cause and yeah. like he Derek said, uh, gives the teens something to do that's hands-on and helpful to the community. Now are the teens that you work with uh, suffering from um, any kind of uh, mental illness? Um, not that I know of, but pretty much everyone has someone in their family somewhere along the lines that's probably suffered from one of those those diseases. You mentioned earlier something I wanted to ask you about. You talked about uh, sustainability. Now you're yes. talking about this particular project, this bookcase operation. Tell us about that. Yeah, because when we're doing research about how to make a, bo a bookcase, like the first one we made, made out of wood, wood from Lowe's, but when I'm re researching, I want to do something that is free, that is that will be the least cost. And one thing I found out was that people were throwing away these pallets and they were reusing these pallets and I was thinking and then I was you know, using certain websites and found out bookcases that were being made out of pallet wood and and seeing how much it would cost. Uh, how, how, I mean, how much it will, will how, how much you can sell for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I was thinking, that, like something that this that is that doesn't cost a lot of money and 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 be so. Uh, I think of the right word for it. Useful, nice. Useful. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. 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 Useful. Just that. Practical. Yeah. yeah practical. Very, yeah. Very practical. Yeah. Yeah. I want, now, and also, like most people, we talk about the environment and sustainability, but they don't uh, actually do something where they can. Just, they're actually sustainable. And I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll try. To, I'm working right now with Sharon Hightower to do something with the parks and recreation where we can put in something made, made out of pallet wood. We can do do something with all sorts of wellness or with sustainability and put that up in a city park or some kind of public building. Yeah, so we, we're working hard because I've been calling the newspapers, I've been calling the politicians and all that. All that. Well, tell us about your work with Sharon. Now, Sharon Hightower, of course, is our uh, uh, city councilwoman from District 1. Tell us about your work with Sharon. She was a great person to work with. Like, she was going to the human release, uh, I mean, Human relations. She was going to the uh, planning department, and she was basically talk, talking to various uh, government officials. And then at the end, she said, "Oh, there's this guy." And I be getting calls from uh, Love Crossing. I getting calls from Sue uh, of Human Relations. I get getting calls from Sue Schultz of the uh, of the planning department. And I be get, getting these calls, and I will be going to you know to that municipal building or next to the courthouse, and mm -hmm. I will be. And in meetings where I'll be discussing uh, how I want to get youth and how, how I want to promote entrepreneurship because we can teach youth entrepreneurship with a hand on an activity like this and I'll basically tell them that uh, tell them the basic information and they was really supportive and I wish for I'll try to make sure these government officials will follow through and get some more youth involved in this because we want kids to, kids be engaged in productive uh, educational activities because right now kids don't have anything to do and they involve in gang stuff right now and yeah. they get getting into all these homicides right now and we want to get some we got something for them to do right now we just need for the various people in the community to just send send us the kids okay very very good and you mentioned earlier that they have uh, discontinued the shop classes and a lot of the hands-on mm -hmm. classes in the school so this would be a great way to get the kids involved in that again. Yeah, the reason why I think it was the uh, expenses and like yeah. the public school they they have enough money and that like, this work is free. We got the basic tools uh, at at Jam's house. We got the donations at Jam's house. I How's mean, that Chandler? Uh, well, yeah. at Chandler's house. <laughs> so we got then the tools, the paint, 
the pallet wood. It's gonna be a free, uh, low budget shop class. That, that what I want, want, want it to be. Yeah. Well, do you think you'll continue to do this with uh, used uh, pallets and, and that wood, or do you foresee the day maybe when you'll be buying new materials and making things out of uh, new woods and new products? There's certain qualities to the, to the pallet wool that see how it real different from the mass produced wool that you found at at you know stores right now. Mm -hmm. That just I just just fell in lo love with it. It's like using the pallet wood, yeah. Yeah, it just look a bit beautiful right now.